The local orchestra musicians are extremely excited today to sit down with Jerry Abramson. You know Jerry as a former mayor and governor. We know him as a member of our board. And what you may not know is that Jerry, in fact, was a very talented and accomplished musician. Jerry, welcome and thanks Thank for you. joining us. Great to be with you. Tell us about your history as a musician. Well, I went to Seneca High School and the school was just beginning. When I went there, it just went up to the 10th grade. So they were starting a band. Um, and I wanted to get in the band, and so I started taking trumpet lessons. I wanted to be a trumpet player, and, in, and I wanted to get in the marching band. Shortly thereafter, uh, they got uniforms for the marching band, but they had enough trumpet players. And so I didn't get a uniform. I wasn't that good a trumpeter, obviously. But they said if I played French horn, I would be able to get a uniform. Well, that's all it took. And so I became a French horn player, and uh, the, the fingering was very similar. And, um, you know, it got me into the marching band. It also uh, got me into the orchestra. We had both a marching band and an orchestra, with the orchestra being violins and violas, etc. cetera. Um, and so that's how I became a French horn player. And interestingly enough, when I first got on the board of the Louisville Orchestra, which were many, many years ago, I've been on three times. Uh, once before I was mayor, and then once before I was lieutenant governor, and then once, and then now. And um, we had a section of board members in the first time I was on the board. We, we call ourselves the French Horn Section. Jerry Ball, who was the uh, uh, head of the, the dean of the School of Music at U of L at the time, was a French horn player. And uh, Barry Bingham Jr. Uh, uh, was a French horn player too. And so the three of us always sat in the same place at the board meetings and we called ourselves the French horn section. I love that. <laughs> so being a musician yourself... Well, I, I wouldn't go that far. I played the French horn. <laughs> Having played the French horn. There you go. How does it feel when you come to concerts? Is it a different experience having had that you know, musicianship in your background? Well, for the first part, I, d I decided that sitting down on the floor didn't give me an opportunity to see the French horn players who were in the back row. So that meant that the next year and all the years thereafter, we're upstairs so that I can at least see the guys and gals who are playing French horn. Secondly, uh, through the Making Music concerts, which I participated in as a child uh, with the uh, uh, maestro uh, Whitney, uh, I learned a lot about this is what an oboe sounds, this is what a clarinet sounds, this is what a, a bassoon sounds like. And so now by being up in the up higher, I can find those instruments as I hear them uh, playing their part in the, in, the, uh, in the music. Absolutely. Do you have a favorite piece? Is there one piece of music that struck you growing up? Or do you have a certain genre of music yeah, that you enjoy? I think I'm a traditionalist. You know, okay. Beethoven, Mozart, Bach. Those kinds of, of composers are the ones that, yeah. that I get most excited about. So, having traveled extensively, as you have, our orchestra has an incredible history with recordings, particularly of new music. Did you have interesting conversations around that on your travels around the world? You know, it was amazing to me. I, I would subscribe to the first edition records. And I have a bunch in my attic, I think. Uh, my Victrola doesn't play, or the turntable doesn't play, but I got them. But when I would travel to our sister cities, whether it was Montpellier in France, whether it was Mainz in Germany, uh, whether it was Leeds in, in England, or even Perm in, in the Ural Mountains of Russia, uh, Quito, Ecuador, mm -hmm. constantly at some point uh, in those visits, somebody would say, you know, what's with the Louisville Orchestra? We've heard them before. We know they make these albums. We hear them on the classical stations. Uh, when we go to a record store, there is a section of the newest music being uh, recorded by the Louisville Orchestra. And that was when I first realized that we were probably more, we, the Louisville Orchestra, were probably more well known abroad at that time than we were here throughout the United States. So you must have many demands on your time. And you have very generously given of that time to the Louisville Orchestra Board. What is it about the Louisville Orchestra Board that uh, excited you to serve? Well, I love, I love the Louisville Orchestra. I have loved it ever since I was in middle school. At that time, they called it junior high and, and the making music concerts. Uh, my wife enjoys music. 
And, and together we've decided that, that, you know, as you look around the culture of community, and I certainly saw this as mayor when I was mayor for over two decades, the Louisville Orchestra is sort of the underpinning. I mean, you want a great ballet, you need an orchestra. You want a great opera, you need an orchestra. I've been through the, the recorded music for those operations, and it's not as good in my judgment. And so you've got to support what, in my judgment, is the, the predicate upon which the cultural community is based, and that's the, the Louisville Orchestra. And so uh, anything I can do to enhance, to expand, and certainly now with Teddy in charge to support his efforts uh, for the next generation. But I'm beginning to see more young people show up and, and you know, as we frame our ticket prices, as we focus on young kids, especially in the, in the early high school uh, and early college opportunities, to get them in, once you've heard it, once you've seen what is so special about this music, you become an LO fan. Looking forward to the future, what are you most excited about for the orchestra and, and for the programs to come? Well, I'm excited about going back to Carnegie Hall. I went the last time I was mayor. Uh, went to the Russian Tea Room afterwards for dinner, although I think it's gone now. But I went up with the Louisville folks and it was so incredible to be sitting there in Carnegie Hall looking around and saying the Louisville Orchestra is here and the energy that it created. So I'm really looking forward to doing that again. And I guess, I guess that's the thing that, that I'm most excited about. I'm very excited about the opportunities that I think uh, are there for Paris Town. Um, that's a whole new genre uh, with a whole new potential audience. Um, as the restaurant comes down and the green space is expanded, to be able to go there when the weather's good, sit out, watch you all and, and Teddy do his thing up on the wall uh, as you're doing it inside the theater, uh, I think that's a real exciting dimension. Yeah. For members of the community who haven't been to the orchestra or aren't involved in the orchestra, what would you say to them? Give it a shot. I mean, I think, you know, it's like, it's like, Louisville's the best kept secret in the country. We always used to say that, although I think the country is caught up with us. I think the Louisville Orchestra is one of the best kept secrets in this community. And if we can get people to give it a chance, uh, we'll get them hooked. Because the product is so excellent. You all provide such a great sound. Teddy provides such energy. You put all that together in a great theater, in a great hall. Uh, you've really got something special. And the Louisville Orchestra is special for the, today and for the future of Louisville.